So many people try so many things to lower their blood sugars and bring down their A1C scores, and yet nothing seems to work. In the following video, I'm going to share with you an interview with a man who found a way to slash his A1C score from 6.9 to 4.2 in six months' time. I received a wonderful email from a man named Eric Cooper who reported seeing tremendous results in his health and in his blood sugar after reading my book and applying the principles in it. Noticing that he was also a Texan and just a few hours drive from where I was, I asked him if I could come and interview him. Eric graciously agreed and so on a rainy morning my wife Benedict and I made the drive to Eric's house. It turned out he lived so far out in the country that he was not easily found even with GPS. But eventually we arrived and found Eric and his wife Deborah to be a delightful couple. And did Eric ever have a story to tell? But before we got to the interview, they served us a wonderful low-carb lunch consisting of a salad and a chicken soup with many vegetables, but without any rice, pasta, or cornstarch. It was delicious, and we tested our blood sugar levels before we ate, and then after we finished the interview about an hour later. Both of us had good post-meal numbers, with Eric's being at 125, which was far lower than his typical fasting blood sugar had been six months ago. Let's go now to the amazing story that Eric had to tell. Okay, well, we are here at the home of Eric Cooper and his wife, Deborah. Eric, thank you so much for agreeing to be interviewed. You're very welcome. I'm uh, glad to have you. Well, thank you. Uh, I have uh, been so blessed. I, I first learned about you through an email you sent me, and you told just how much uh, the book that I had written, 60 Ways to Lower Your Blood Sugar, has uh, changed your life. So we're going to talk about that. But first, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, you're retired now, but tell us what you did before and uh, maybe uh, how you first realized you had some problems with blood sugar. Uh, I retired five years ago. Uh, I was a project manager for a major construction company that works worldwide. Okay. And prior to my retiring, I had never really been given any bad numbers as far as mm -hmm. glucose or A1C. So you'd been tested fairly regularly? You, you go to the doctor regularly and get every About every blood six tests. months. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, Mainly because we were chasing my cholesterol. Okay. Uh, the A1C was just an incidental part of the test. And it had never been an issue until a couple of years ago. Okay. So when you say a couple, you mean two, three? Uh, probably two and a half, three two years ago. Two and a half, three years yeah. ago. Okay. Because uh, when I retired, I put on some weight. Of course, I didn't work as much anymore. I didn't yeah. get up at 4.30 in the morning and <laughs> and uh, drive an hour and a half to work. So. Uh -huh. Um, so did it creep up gradually or did it suddenly you went there and you had no, serious issues? No, I think issues? it kind of creeped up because okay. it was seemed to be, seems to me like it was a little higher each time. Okay. And it finally got to the point where my doctor said, if it goes up another tenth, we're going to put you on insulin. Wow. What, what did you think about that? Uh, the thought of giving myself a shot every day scared me to death. Okay. So suddenly you had a little motivation to do something about your situation, if at all possible. Yes. Did you know what to do at that point? Uh, yeah, all the wrong things. All the wrong things, okay. Which uh, were? We bought uh, diabetic cookbooks. Okay. We read articles on treatment of diabetes, and everything we read basically sent us in the wrong direction because there was little to no improvement. Okay, so you're, you're trying a lot of different things. You're reading the so-called experts, and trying to follow their advice as best you can, but getting no results. Right. Okay. The, the, the drop in my A1C was minimal. Okay. So you were still at a diabetic level? Yes. What was the number, do you recall? Yeah. Uh, six months ago, it was 6.9. And was that the highest it, it had been? It got up yes. to 6.9. So that yes. is in the diabetic range, although there are worse. There are some in the sevens and eights and so forth, but that... That is diabetic. Yeah. Uh, what, well, what my doctor said was, if you go over seven, we're yeah. going to put you on insulin. Okay. 
So that's pretty serious stuff. Yeah. You tried different things, nothing seemed to be working, and apparently my book helped you. Yes. Yeah. Uh, How did you come across my book in the first place? Actually, my wife and my mother had the, she was here visiting for Christmas, and they had gone shopping. I was recovering from surgery, so I was kind of immobile. Okay. And they had gone shopping, and when they came home, she walked over and dropped this book in my lap, and she said, I found this at the grocery store. Hmm. And so I sat down and read it pretty much cover to cover. And from that point on, we threw pasta, rice, bread. We haven't bought a loaf of bread since then. Uh, well, you do better than I do because I do occasionally eat a, a slice of bread. Uh, the worst I've had was we were over at friend's house two months ago, and they brought out ham and cheese sandwiches. Mm -hmm. We were working out in a friend of mine's barn. And uh, his wife brought us all a ham and cheese sandwich. Mm. And so I've had a sandwich since uh -huh. last Christmas. So you changed pretty much your entire eating pattern yes. based on my book. What was it about the book that convinced you? I mean, you have to, number one, read it, of course, but you also have to, to believe it. What was it that, that struck you that gave you the, the idea, yeah, I really need to go this direction? I think it was your relating your experiences okay. and other people's experiences in the book mm -hmm. that this won't be that hard to try. Right. And almost immediately, my fasting glucose numbers started coming down. What was the highest that you had normally seen as a fasting blood sugar number? Around 160. You'd wake up in the morning, you'd test yourself, it'd be at 160. That's, that's significantly high. Yes. Uh, that's not just borderline. That is definitely high for a fasting. And uh, and you'd seen, I guess, 140s, 150s. The 140s, 160. 150s were pretty regular. Pretty regular. Uh, yeah, the 160 was uh, an anomaly. But yeah. the 140 to 147 range was pretty regular mm -hmm. first thing in the morning. And from everything I'd read, that was too high. Sure. But, Nothing I was doing was really bringing them down. There were some days that I'd be in the 120s, mm -hmm. high 120s. But that was usually because the day before I had either had almost nothing to eat or literally had just had soup and vegetables or something along those lines. Okay. So you read the book, 60 Ways to Lower Your Blood Sugar, and you're saying that it affected your fasting blood sugar fairly quickly from the point where you begin to practice some of these uh, restricting uh, carbohydrates in your diet? I would say within the first week, okay. after a week of not eating a high-carb diet, yeah. I started to see it come down. Wow. The, the most miraculous thing was that within two weeks, I started losing weight. Okay. You probably weren't even counting on that, were no, you? No, that was strictly, and that was by accident. I stepped on the scale one morning and went, Where'd it go? <laughs> and my biggest problem now is finding a belt that fits. Wow. Uh, I went from 235 to 190. Okay, that, that's amazing. So how long between the visit to the doctor where you had the high numbers versus the next visit where the numbers had dropped significantly? Was that like over a period of a couple of months, six it months? It was exactly, almost exactly six months from 1215 of 2015 to May 6th of this year. Okay. And so by that time, it was the same doctor that you were visiting. She had seen your numbers previously. She had told you if it goes a tenth of the point higher on the A1C that you'll need to go on insulin. Six months later, you come in. What kind of numbers does she find at that point? My A1C was 4.2. 4.2. That's amazing. And it's not only amazing, it's, it's wonderful. Okay, what else? What other numbers? Uh, my cholesterol went. My cholesterol has been high my entire life, so that's nothing new. But it went from 263 down to 245. 263 to 245. Okay. My triglycerides. This is the one that really woke her up. My triglycerides were 347 mm -hmm. in December. They're 158. Wow. Cut it in half. Cut it in half. A little over cutting it in half. So how did your doctor respond when she saw these numbers? Her exact quote was, what on earth are you doing? 
<laughs> she probably hadn't seen that much no, she uh, is, in terms of her diabetic patients. She said she had never seen anybody make this big a change in so short a period of time. Never, never. seen such a change. In now, such she's a not a real period. old doctor, but still. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, she had never seen this big a change in such a short period of time. Wow. And w did she uh, encourage you to continue on with what you were doing or say, oh, no, she that's said, all wrong? No, she said, don't stop. Whatever it is you're doing, <laughs> keep doing it. Well, that, that is awesome. And uh, so you've seen your fasting blood sugar come down. Your A1C has gone from 6.9 into the fours, yeah. which is better than mine. Uh, what, to what do you attribute all this? Mostly paying very close attention. We, my wife has been instrumental in helping me do this. Mm -hmm. uh, we read labels now okay. carefully. Yeah. Uh, it's astonishing the things in the grocery store. You pick them up, you read the label, and you go, holy cow, this is supposed to be good for you. Yeah. But it's yeah. not. Mm -hmm. uh, all the diabetic cookbooks, and we have a cabinet full of them, they're all of them very high in carbs, which is astonishing. It is. Uh, it, it is almost unbelievable that they can have the audacity to call themselves diabetic cookbooks and yet have so many carbohydrates in their recipes. I don't, yeah. I don't get it myself. And I, changing my diet has not really been, I don't feel deprived. Okay. Uh, yesterday we had uh, baked chicken or broiled, broiled chicken mm -hmm. and spinach and a salad. I would have eaten that anyway. Before <laughs> it wasn't now. a big sacrifice for you. No. Yeah. Uh, I've gotten to the point where I don't miss pasta or rice. And I was raised on rice and rice dishes mm -hmm. and uh, lots of beans, things like that. I was never a big beef eater ever. Okay. So it's I eat a little more red meat now than I used to, which doesn't seem to be bothering me. Yeah. Like I said, my cholesterol went down. It hasn't gone up. That's amazing. And... and People have said if you don't eat uh, low-fat, high-carb diets, your cholesterol will go through the roof, you'll have a heart attack you know, within a few months, and, and on and on they go. And here you are. All your numbers are improving. Uh, and, and you're not alone, by the way. I mean, we, we're seeing this, not just me, but I mean doctors are seeing this all over the world, that this approach to reducing carbohydrates and sugars and starches it really does not only affect your blood sugar, but other things as well. Now, the fact that you could change so radically and so quickly in terms of your diet, you didn't think about this for about a year and, and then gradually start to make some changes. I mean, it's like overnight. What, what made you so highly motivated to make such radical changes so quickly? Two things, or actually more than two, but one of the things I read about was the problem people have with their feet. Right. And I was having difficulty with my feet. They were keeping me up at night. They Pain were hurting your so feet. bad. Yeah. Okay. And my, I had gone for a regular eye exam, and my eye doctor said, uh, you need to do something about your blood sugar. Okay. And I was kind of curious of why he would know yeah. there's an issue with my blood sugar. Sure. And he says it causes ruptures in the eye. Mm -hmm. of the very tiny blood vessels in the back of your eye. Yeah. High blood sugar will cause those blood vessels to rupture. Okay. And he said, if you don't do something about it, it's going to seriously affect your eyesight. So he had not uh, given you a blood sugar test, no. but he could tell from these ruptures An that he could see exam. Yeah. that you, you must have high blood sugar yes. and it was affecting your eyesight. So you had a doctor, one doctor telling you, you're probably going to have to go on insulin. You had your feet hurting you to the point where you could hardly sleep sometimes. And then you had a, a, an eye doctor telling you, you've got to do something about your blood sugar. And you did. And I did. And what I think most people do, even at that point, is they go buy something like one of these diabetic cookbooks. Yeah. I used to snack on bread. Okay. I mean, literally, that was my afternoon snack, was two pieces of uh, whole wheat bread. Yeah. Never even thought about what it might be doing to your blood sugar. No. Yeah. Uh, because all of the books that we had read previously, you know, you can have bread with this meal, you put pasta in this, you put rice in that, right. put these beans in that. All of those books are wrong. Uh-huh. Well, you've tested it. You know what works for yourself. You've seen the difference that it makes. Thinking about moving on from here, do you think you'll have trouble staying with this kind of a diet and this kind of a lifestyle 
the rest of your years. Is this going to be a struggle for you, or do you feel like, yeah, I can do this? Oh, I can do this easily. There's, I, I really and truly don't feel deprived. Great. Um, like I said, yesterday we had chicken with a salad and spinach, which I like spinach. Uh, we had a fresh salad today. Uh, that I, I cut all that. Those were all fresh vegetables. I cut them up this morning. Mm -hmm. um, we make more chicken dishes probably now than we used to, but that's okay. Sure. Um, Do you I have, have desserts. Yes, um, sugar-free Jello. Okay. And strawberries. Uh huh. Strawberries are wonderful for people with blood sugar problems. They're yes. low in sugar, and they, they don't realize it. Good. Yeah. Yeah. You go in these diabetic cookbooks. I, I don't remember seeing strawberries in there at all anywhere. Wow. Yeah. So the Atkins book is the closest to, I'll say, improving the diet in the way you eat. But all of the rest of them that are on the market are just there to sell books. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I, they, I think they probably believe what they're saying, but they probably believe it because other people have said it and other people have said it. But in terms of practical, uh, what really works, you know, you found what works. Yeah, and I did as well in my own lifestyle. If you're not testing yourself every day, yeah. you don't know what works. So you've done a lot of testing of yourself. Yeah, every day. And you I still get up do. every morning. And yeah. first thing I do before uh, water, coffee, anything, I go in the kitchen and put on my glasses so I can read it yeah. and uh, poke a hole in my finger. Okay. <laughs> well, we uh, are so thankful for how this has helped you. And uh, to me, at the heart of all of this, is that one statement by your doctor. Tell us once more what the doctor said when she saw those results. What did she say she to you? She said, what on earth are you doing? <laughs> what on earth are you doing? And I'm sure you told her. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, that, that is awesome. Uh, Eric, thank you so much for agreeing to sit down and talk with us for a few minutes. I think you're going to be an inspiration to a lot of people. I, I'm, I'm happy that you're here. I Just like I told you in the email, I truly believe you saved my life. Thank you so much, Eric. And thank you. Okay. No, I'm the one that owes you. Well, That's God, for sure. God bless you and thank the Lord for it all.